All right, so how can higher interest rates benefit you if you are a buyer right now or you're thinking of buying in this current market? I want to walk you through some slides that I've created that will help you understand how inflation works with the interest rates, what's going on in the current market, and the real opportunity that could be available right now. Um, and if you blink, you could miss it. So I'm going to walk you through just a few different slides, give you a little bit of education as to what's going on, what's driving this information, and why it takes so long to show up in the economy and in real estate and in mortgage interest rates specifically. Um, so when we take a look here at uh, these first couple of slides, okay, is that the first thing we want to talk about is inflation. So inflation is the number one driver of interest rates. When inflation is up and going higher, interest rates tend to move up and go higher with it. When inflation comes down, mortgage interest rates continue to move down with it. And as you can see right now, inflation is on the way down. And when you look at a chart like this, you might be thinking, well, then how come interest rates haven't moved down significantly yet? And that's a great question because it can be a little confusing because of all of the lagging reporting that happens when we talk about inflation. So uh, let's talk about CPI. So CPI is the Consumer Price Index, and it is uh, basically the authority of how our economy measures inflation. And when we look at this, shelter costs makes up 43% of what's called the core CPI. Okay, so it makes up 43%. So shelter costs would be housing, rents, et cetera. Now, if we look at this chart right here, we can see that rents had moved up significantly, significantly from January 2021 all the way up until about June of 2022. It moved up almost 20%, about 18% in that time frame. Well, you can see that from that point, okay, um, up until just about now, is that it has decreased about 10%, okay, just over 10%. So when we look at this on a year over year basis, it still shows that rents are up because they do it on a year over year basis. So even though we've already hit the peak, the data is still coming out and saying that rents are up and that inflation is still a problem. So here is a great visual that kind of explains how this data lags and how it gets absorbed into our economy and how it affects interest rates is you can see this is a roller coaster and when if you're sitting at the very front cart of a roller coaster if you've ever been on one you're going down already just like rents have gone down continue to go down and inflation has gone down continues to go down but if you were sitting in the very back cart you're actually still on your way up so you haven't hit the down slope yet and this is a great visual to understand how the lagging indicators get reported to us from an economic standpoint. Now, the real shelter cost, as you can see here, is going down already, okay? We know that from just looking at month over month, year over year even, it's still going down, but the shelter and CPI gets reported in a lag backwards. So the reporting is still coming out saying that, hey, this is a problem, inflation is up. And this is a problem with our economy in general and the way that we look at things from a Fed perspective, et cetera, is that we always look backwards too far rather than looking forwards. And that's how we get into these economic predicaments of where rates will eventually have to drop significantly and cuts will have to happen because we're always looking in the rear view mirror, not looking forward. Now, when we take a look at this again and we look at these shelter costs and then we, add, we take this line that I just drew through here, this goes to show you how the reporting works. Okay, so the year over year. So this is exactly what I was referencing where even though we're down significantly on shelter costs, we can see that it's still reporting year over year that it's up about 7.9% because it's looking backwards. Now, when, if we were to take the difference in shelter cost, so for example, 4.9%, uh, right, um, times 0.43, that's 2%. So if we were to catch up or if we were to actually report in real time, we would actually see that, you know, we're at 3.5% versus 5.5% on a core inflation reading, literally 2% lower than what's currently being reported, which is having an effect or a stickiness, we should say, on inflation and the mortgage market. Well, why is this important? It's important for a number of reasons. Uh, number one is let's focus on existing home inventory right now. So if we look back at previous um, 
inventory situations like 2007 when we had the crash because every every buyer i'm talking to wants to know are we at the bottom have we hit the bottom when is the crash going to happen we know it's going to happen well in 2007 we had a peak listing inventories of four million homes available on the market well as you can see inventory has continued to go down every year since then and right now in 2023 we sit at 980,000 total listings available on the market but when you start to peel back that information you will see that the existing homes in inventory even though it reads 980,000 there is 402,000 of those that are already under contract that means they're not available for buyers they're not available for people to make offers on etc because they are actually pending sale in contract so really there's only actual inventory of about 578,000 homes this is not nearly nearly enough with our population growth over the last decade to keep pace with demand especially if interest rates are going to move down significantly creating even more demand in the next 12 months so when we take a look at the active listing report and then we take a look at how does this what does this mean for us in a current market as an opportunity well this little you know smiley face let's call it is um, just shows you how markets move. So if we're coming down on the downward trend and this bottom is right there in the bottom, okay, where I'm, I'm circling with my cursor, it's impossible to actually ever time the exact bottom. I'll give you a great example. We're already about 10% off of our highs uh, from a purchase price perspective uh, in the counties that I work in Northern California. So technically things are already down about 10% right on on a year over year basis from a purchase price or opportunity now what happens though is that after the bottom is hit here right which could happen you know and i don't know i don't have a crystal ball it could happen in three months it could happen this month it could happen six months from now but the reality is whenever it happens and people wait until um, sellers become more confident when interest rates go down and then things start to pick back up and that's when everyone jumps back in the market. And what we realize is that we've missed a little bit of opportunity because over here, right before we hit wherever that actual bottom is, sellers are more fearful or because there's less competition. People are concerned about you know, their job, employment, the economy, and all of those things that go into emotional reasons that people purchase a home. So the real opportunity is between here and here is when it is the right time to purchase a home if you're looking for an opportunity or a quote unquote, a deal. We don't wanna necessarily wait until after we've already hit bottom and things are getting better and they're on an upswing because we really miss this whole opportunity from here to here. Now, last um, market bottom cycle. Let's talk about this for a second. So 2012 was essentially right around February was the last quote unquote, uh, market bottom cycle that we had. And what we saw that as soon as we rebounded from that and things started going up, they went up pretty sharply. They went about 8% uh, just in that one year time frame, following from an appreciation standpoint. Home values went up about 8% in a year after we hit the market bottom cycle in 2012. We have to keep in mind though, that was with 2.4 million homes in inventory on the market. As we know, we just discussed there's 980,000, really 578,000 homes that are actively available. So that could just make the competition even more so after everyone's decided they feel comfortable, interest rates are lower, and we've hit that a proverbial bottom. So this gives you like a really good visual here when you're looking at it on, this was in 2012, 2.4 million, went up 8% the following year, but here's where we're at right now. I mean, significantly less inventory that doesn't seem to have any sort of um, fixing of sorts moving forward just because people are staying in their homes longer. They have very low interest rates. Over 67% of people that have a mortgage right now in the US have a rate that is below 3.875% or less. So those people are staying in their homes longer. They don't have a real reason to move and their mortgage is super, super affordable. So this is gonna create tight inventory for the unforeseeable future. Now, if we were to dive into the numbers a little bit more on what the opportunity is, I'm gonna give you a couple examples here. And um, this specific example is a home value of 500,000 with a mortgage amount of 400,000, just to keep it really simple, okay? 
So if rates have risen about 1%, right, over the last year from where they're at today, from where they were a year ago, that's about $250, $257 a month from a monthly payment standpoint. So that's real. And remember, this is just based on a $400,000 loan amount. So increase year over year is about $3,000 a year, which is why it's slowed down purchase applications because people are going, hey, can I actually afford that? Right? Does that fit into my monthly budget? Now, what's interesting is that opportunity is about a 2% discount. And I'm being, and I already told you, things are down about 10% off their peak in my markets. They could be a little bit different everywhere, of course, but let's just say that the opportunity is a 2% under uh, whatever a purchase price was a year ago. That's about a $10,000 savings. And you can use this opportunity um, either to use the savings in the form of a seller concession, uh, which you can buy down interest rate with, you can use it to pay closing costs, or you could just buy the asset, the real estate, at a slightly discounted price because of where we're at in the market. Well, what's interesting is that if price rises as rates decline, we're just going to estimate 3%. So even though I showed you that when we hit the last uh, market bottom during the cycle, that the value of the asset went up 8% in the next 12 months, we're going to be super conservative here and just say, hey, it goes up, let's say it goes up 3%. Okay, so that would be equal to about $15,000 in appreciation when you're looking at it from an asset standpoint and it moving up. So now we've purchased the house, we've got a discount of about $10,000 from a purchase standpoint, and we have about $15,000 of appreciation. So the cost for the higher interest rate, we do have to take into consideration that you're paying. Um, plus, I'm gonna put in here the cost to refi because we know that interest rates have already started to go down and they're going to plummet eventually once um, this inflation number, can, this, these lagging reports I talked about get absorbed into the media and into the economy, we'll start seeing interest rates move down quicker. So you're going to end up refinancing whatever loan you get right now if you're purchasing at some point in the next 12 to 24 months, regardless of what you get right now. So I wanna take into consideration cost of refinancing as well in here. So let's just say that that costs $5,000 total between uh, cost of inflated mortgage payments you're paying plus the cost of a future refinance. Let's take 5,000 out. That's still a $20,000 benefit right now that you can get from not waiting and purchasing, knowing that as the rates drop, homes are gonna go up, even if we only use 3% from an appreciation rate, which is super, super conservative with your discount, it's a $20,000 benefit on a $500,000 purchase. And that's huge. So these are just some simple, simple things that you should know when you're looking at an opportunity or you're thinking of buying right now, and everyone's circumstance is totally different, right? So if you have questions, I'd be honored to talk to you about it. Feel free to shoot me an email, drop me a text, uh, send me a, a message, however you wanna reach out. And we would be more than happy to go through your specific situation. Make sure you understand this data and don't miss out on a golden opportunity.